breathe in too much, so I exploded. Let's practice one more time. <laughs> breathe out. Okay. Now practice daily, okay? So while you're alone, instead of listening to the voice of death, practice abdominal breathing. Let us start with a prayer. <laughs> Father, you are love. Because you are love, you wanted to give us love. And that's why you formed us from the dust. And you breathe into our nostrils of breath of life. And you made us a living beings. The love is so important. You gave us your heart. You gave us your heart into your breath. Your heart and your will and your love is in your word. So your words are so important to us because we've been so busy and because we had so many important things in our lives, we forgot your spark, but then we saved those things that we thought that's important. Father, we want to seek the beauty and the truth and the goodness. Please, Father, be with us this hour, at this hour so that we want to, we really want to deeply understand your word. Please, Father, so that your love will touch our turned off genes. May your love become our life. Please restore our genes through your love. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Because our genes respond to meaning. If you know the false things, then it'll give you disadvantage. If you misunderstand something, if you misunderstand the truth, it will damage your genes really bad. Why? Because our genes respond to meaning. You know, we've been practicing New Start, and we've been practicing, we've been learning the spark. There is only life from God. There is no death from God. When we are blocked, when we are blocked, then only the death is coming in. 
when the life cannot come to us, then we have only death. It's like the same with the electricity and the TV set. So death itself doesn't exist, but there if there's no life, then death is there. And because of lacking the spark, which is life, and because of lacking proper environment, we have death and we have sicknesses and we have we have diseases. But God didn't give us those diseases. You have to understand this clearly. Now, as you read the Bible, you know, God says, sometimes I punished you so that you got sick. Many places in the Bible said that way because you didn't obey me. I punished you and you will die eternally. That's how it is written in the Bible. Then, you know, sounds totally different that I have been telling you. You know, when Christians, you know, get sick, sometimes pl people blame them or rebuke them, like you didn't give tithe and you didn't come to our prayer meetings and things like that. And they say, that's why you get, you know, this cancer and that's why you got this traffic accident, things like that. They think in this way, you know, Let's say God exists, and but because you are not royal to God, God is punishing you to discipline you. That kind of way of thinking levels down God with us. We think of God, we think of God that way, but God is way beyond. His level is way up above. We don't understand God's way, but then we understand God in our own way. But you know, even us, really loving parents, don't treat their children like that. But we want to understand God in our own way. That's kind of shamanist way. Most Koreans believe in God in that shamanist way. They don't even understand God's love like real loving parents love. You know, God punishes you if you don't go to church. God punishes you if you don't come to prayer meeting and things like that. Now you, let's say, you didn't give tithes to church, but then you get sick, and then you automatically think, oh, because I didn't give tithe, I got sick. That kind of faith we call shamanist faith. Originally, in Cor I mean, Koreans are, were, Koreans have been into shamanist belief. However, Christianity from the Western world came into Korea. Now this Christianity became shamanized. And that's why a lot of Christians think this way. So if you go to church with this kind of way of thinking continuously, you don't learn the Christianity, but then you learned uh, shamanized Christianity. But then, there are some Bible verses which will assist you to believe this kind of shamanized Christianity. Last night, I told you that God is our creator. The reason why he created a man because he is love. He wanted to give this love to someone. So to give this his love, he created a man. 
He didn't create a man to play with. So he created men to give unconditional love. In fact, when you get sick, God needs to give you more love. In the Bible, they say that where there is more sin, you know, God's grace is overflowing. God's love is way above than God's, uh, our love. You know, our love is like we treat well to those good kids, but then we punish those kids who are spoiled. But God's love is not like that. If you're good, you know, God doesn't really have to give you all the love, but those spoiled kids God gives more love. Why? To convert this little ki spoiled kids into good kids. So that is how God thinks. But generally, churches don't teach this way. Even though the Bible says where there are more sins, God's grace will you know, overflow. Even though the Bible speaks this way, tells this way, but then our churches don't teach this way. I have two daughters. They're um, one year apart. My first daughter, when she was born, she was not that, you know, cute baby. She was not so cute. And then second daughter, my second one, she was so pretty. Even when she was little, she was so pretty. So who looks at... Who do you look at more? The cuter ones. Now my first one, she got her diaper on. Now, how did she feel? How would, you know, my first daughter feel? I didn't think about that. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to do whatever what I wanted to do. That's our love. But God's love exists for other people. Our love is more like selfish. I love because I want to. And I say, I love someone. But that is not love. The Bible also says, if you're good to someone who are good to you, then that is not love. Even though somebody hates you, but if you love that person, then that is true love. That's what the Bible says. If we can do, we c if we can follow this by teaching, teachings of Jesus, then this world will be totally different. Well, at least God treats us this way. You know, at the time, my friends, you know, had like, you know, their daughters and their children, their kids, you know, about the same age. You know, because we're Koreans in America, so, you know, we invite people, we invited people, and we're invited as well, because we had no relatives around in America. You know, when my friends come, who are, who are they looking at? They only looked at my second daughter. Oh, so pretty and so cute. How would my first daughter feel? We didn't know. We just thought, you know, she was just toddling over. You know, we just thought she didn't feel anything. In that sense, in that way, we are not, you know, well educated. When we look at American parents, they really care for these kind of things. And as I look at even my daughter raising their children, you know, my case, like, if we don't feel like talking, then we don't answer. We would say, like, oh, I'm tired. Don't talk to me. Things like that. But American mothers, they always answer. They know how to sacrifice themselves. This is because, that is because. So since 
since they're a child, you know, those American kids know how to develop, you know, rationally. In Korea, we say, if I said this and this is it, that's it. So if, so if we raise our children like that way, we don't have to, um, we can't dominate over them. You know, they explain this and this and so and so rationally. And that's democracy, you know. So my first daughter, you know, my first daughter pinched my second daughter while or scratches her, uh, scratched her little sister, you know, while um, we didn't, while we were sleeping. And, you know, because I didn't know foolish father, you know, I grabbed her and I, I spanked her. So why did you do that to your sister? You know, I didn't understand. I couldn't understand my first daughter. I just saw the fact. Oh, the older sister scratched her s younger sister. That's all I saw. That's all I saw. Instead of looking something behind, I didn't see the truth. I couldn't see the truth. So if you only look at the fact in life, that is so tragedy. That is so sad. I just spanked her. And then my first daughter got even worse. So as she grew up, you know, she got into wrong path more and more. You know, I should have loved her more and more so that she could, you know, back into the right track. And that is the principle of God and principle of the Bible. So it is very important for you to be healthy as you learn the right teachings of Jesus. And when you learn these kind of things correctly, you will have healthy relationship with people and healthy relationship with God. And the whole world will be so peaceful if everybody knows this principle of the Bible. You know, God gives more blessings and more grace where there are more sins. He's not like, you know, he blesses the good ones and he punishes the bad ones. It's not like that. So let's say you get sick. It, it's not because you got, you know, you sinned. Because you sinned, he got punished you and you get sick. It's not like that. That is very shamanist idea. Now the Bible said sin, you know, because of sin, we're separated from God. But God looks for us and God comforts us and God restores us. That is God. You know, when we are depressed, when we have this obsession, when we have like panic, you know, those kind of things happens those kind of things happen when we have hatred in us sometimes we feel like oh that i wish that person dies you know that kind of thinking and then you will say oh what a bad woman i am what a bad man i am oh because i'm so bad god is going to punish me and then you have this fear in you and you feel so guilty and then you you know you you stay in the darkness and you always wonder oh when is god going to punish me you know that kind of faith that kind of distorted faith you trouble you suffer a lot and that's why you get sick mentally Now, what is the punishment, by the way? By the way, the Bible says uh, God punished you, and that's why you got sick. Now, what does this mean? Now, let's look at Isaiah.
Isaiah 55, verse 8. Here it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. We always interpret the Bible in our own way. But the Bible says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways in my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Totally different. The reason why God cancer is because I'm punished. You know, everybody has their own reasons to be punished. You know, who has no reasons? I'll raise my hand. I have the reasons. In our hearts, deep in our hearts, we all have this voice of death. We do think something we're not supposed to think. We do those kind of things sometimes. We're all like that. The Bible says we're all the same. So the Bible says we are the sinners. Even though I do something good, but of course I do, you know, sometimes listen to the voice of death. Some people say, some people say, Sangdi, you are like God. S some, somebody told me, yeah, oh, yeah. She told me I'm like God. But if you look at my mind, look at my heart, you will know I am not. But I'm thankful that I can say this to you. If I can't say this to you, I will be the religious leaders, some kind of um, leaders. I will make that, you know, sect, religion, and I'll be the leader. Some people think I'm so great. But if you want to find out that I'm not that great, go to my wife and ask her. You know, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> However, me myself, when I have uh, when I hear this uh, voice of death, I don't at least think, oh, God, don't punish me. I don't think that way, at least. Instead, God, even though I'm listening to this kind of, you know, deadful, deadly thinking, but I'm very amazed that you're, you're still using me. You know, God gives more grace where there are sins. And I believe it strongly. So when you believe these kind of, you know, when you believe this, you know, you won't listen to the voice of death so often. You so bad one, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to punish you. You know, that kind of voice is from Satan. God never speaks like that. Where there are more sins, God gives more love. God pours his love out to convert that person. Isn't this amazing? So what is God's punishment? If God is like this that I have explained, then God doesn't punish us because I have more sins. Now, the Bible says God punishes you. What does that mean? Now, what's the definition of punishment? Now, definition of punishment, your thinking and my thinking are totally different. You know, when you read the Bible, it's like 
God was very, because of God's wrath. You know, there's wrath. So the definition of wrath in our way of interpretation, in God's way of interpretation, should be different. Now, do you understand what wrath is? You all know the definition of wrath here. Now, you say, you're, you know, Sangni is easygoing, you know? You know, you say, like, Sangni is very easygoing, and, you know? But then, you know, I get upset at with my wife sometimes. I sometimes say, be quiet, you know? <laughs> and then, you know, my wife, you know, she knows what I'm saying. See, you know, I sometimes need to be upset, you know. You know, me, my wife, you know, I can't, you know, say in this way all the time. But sometimes, however, sometimes some people they say, after my prayer, after evening lecture, you know, some people come up to me and, oh, the lecture was so touching and bl I'm so blessed. <laughs> Dr. Lee, you are like God. And, you know, one day you're praying and, and one woman, you know, instead of closing her eyes, she opened her eyes while you know, I was praying because she felt like I'm, you know, like God. So when she looked at me, I had some kind of light, beaming light out of Zheng Li's body, she said. Out of you, Dr. Li. So after the lecture, she sat down. She sat down and talk, she talked to me. Well, actually, I think she was brainwashed by herself. And I didn't have light beam, you know, out of me. But if I misunderstand, oh, wow, really? I have this beaming radiating out of me? Wow. And I go home and they, you know what, honey, dear, you know what I'm, you know, I am, I, ha I can have this, you know, beaming light out of me. You know, then those kind of, uh, people will be increased and I'll be like the uh, sect religious leader. You know, when you are, when you lose your mind, sometimes you can see something wrong. When we look at those, you know, religious leaders in their eyes, I mean, I mean, when you look at some kind of religious leaders, sect religious leaders, there are many, you know, church members there. In their church members' eyes, they can see those kind of light beaming out of their leader's body. You know, me, I don't have that kind of light beaming out of me. You know, I don't want to be that sect religious leader. You know, People, those people who become the l religious leader later on, they ended up with, I am the son of God. You know, I don't want to be. And, you know, I said, you know, I, I am out of false tr ego and I'm out of that, you know, box and I now reached the nirvana, you know, things like that. I preach like this. And then later on, I said, you know, I am the God, you know, later on. I, I'm not that kind of person. You know, once you get into that kind of belief, it's very difficult to get out of it. Oh, 
And then, you know, some people, you know, gossip, oh, you know, Seng Ni, you know, you know, he, he, he can have this light beaming out of himself. And, you know, he, he's God, you know, he's very special. And a lot of people donate their money, okay, to me. But me, I will never, ever be like that. Maybe I want to be, maybe. Because if I am, you know, like that, if I am treated like that way, I will, you know, drive my Benz car, you know, things like that. But the truth is more important. And I exist and I'm happy with myself. I want to be honest. I don't want to camouflage myself. I am what I am. I won't be a different person. Now, God is not going to punish us, but then the Bible says that God punishes. Then the definition of punishment must be so different. That's what Isaiah chapter 55 says. Now, wrath. Definition of God's wrath and our wrath, totally different. When we are really upset and furious with someone, we want to. What do you want? We want to. We want to damage. We want to damage those people. We want to revenge those people. But if God says his mercy and his grace will be overflowing where there are more sins, then do you think it matches? No. The meaning should be different. Uh, you, you know, you should study know the Bible very diligently I learned I'd like to give you the basic concept now even though you study very hard if you have this shamanist idea the meaning will be totally changed now what does that mean wrath of God it's got to be totally different from our wrath if God gives more blessings upon where there are more sins. Now, God wants to give love to us. So the moment when God is really upset, we're really angry, angry is when we deny, we refuse, we turn down his love. Let's say there's a son very smart kid, went to Harvard University. You know, if someone says, you know what, your father is not your really father, is not your real father. But then, you know, this father was so happy because his son could go to Harvard University. I will support you, son. But then son says, well, you're not my father. I'm not going to go to the Harvard. I'm not going to go to Harvard. I'll I'll run away. How would this father feel? I you know the father wanted to give love to God. I mean he th his father wanted to give love to son, but then the son refuses. The son turns it down. Then that kind of feeling is we call wrath. Now, this son went out, you know, ran away, and then now he became, you know, the beggar on the street. He's sleeping at some kind of, you know, on the street. Then how would this father feel? Instead of, you know, kicking and punching him, he, the father wanted him to take back home. That kind of sorry feelings, that kind of, you know, feelings we call wrath. That's the wrath of God. 
it's totally different from our wrath. That what is punishment? What is punishment? Well, he became the, you know, beggar on the street. That is his punishment. Because he turned it down, his father's love, he became the beggar on the street. That is the punishment. That's just the result of his choice. You know, as I, you know, run this New Start Center, I meet a lot of patients. And some patients come and, you know, some people told me to meet you and Dr. Lee and this way and that way. You know, and I explain T cells, you know, your turned off genes. You know, if those turned off genes will be turned on, then, you know, you can overcome your cancer and so on. You know, I don't ask for money. I just explain, right? So, you know, remember this... Uh, infra, you know, those proper environments, you know, healthy diet and drink water, but then they don't practice. Then, you know, your cancer spreads out, and then I see that situation, then I feel, you know, how would I feel? And I understand God's heart. And I know if the patient practices this new start, and I know this person will overcome, but then this person doesn't practice, then how would I feel? That is God's heart. Cast away from all, cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? God says, "Turn back, turn back." That is God's heart. Do you understand? So God's wrath and and God's punishment. What does that mean? When God when a person drinks and smokes and lives in a stressful life and, you know, he got a cancer, lung cancer. You know, in that process, during those, you know, process, God feels so sad. And then God, you know, showed him new start. But then, you know, he doesn't want to practice. Then God says, why? Should you die? Please don't die. That is God. That is our God. Now let's say, you know, I drink and I smoke. I smoke a lot, you know. And I drink a lot, and I, I change my, you know, my genes in my lung can lung cells, and then you know I got a lung cancer. Then who punished who? I punished myself. But then you know God says I punished you, and then you got a cancer. But that's how the Bible says. Now what does that mean? In our way of thinking. So, well, because I did really bad, you know, God punished me. I got a lung cancer. That's our way of thinking. But God's way of thinking is different. You know, I punished you, so you got a cancer. What does that mean? What does this mean? Yes, it means... 
you got a lung cancer. If I were God, I would say, well, I told you not to smoke. I told you not to drink, but you finally got a can lung cancer. Now, if I, you know, say this, if God says this way, then yeah, it's like punishment in our way of thinking. But God says, I made you get cancer cell. This is really something great. In our way of thinking, we would think, oh my, he's so, I'm so afraid of God. You know, I just smoked, you know. You know, you know, my neighbor smoked more, but then he's fine. But then I got a cancer, you know, lung cancer. So this kind of way of thinking is shamanist belief. So in our way of thinking, which is shamanist way of thinking, we judge God this way and that way. We don't know God's true will. Now, what is the true will of God? Now, you know, God is our creator. And at the same time, he gave us the freedom of choice. You know, uh, I got a lung cancer because that's, that's just the result of my wrong behavior. Now, you... For example, Sang Lee, because you smoked a lot and because of those cancerous carcinogenous substances in cigarettes, you got a cancer. Then, you know, God is, you know, taking those neutral, you know, position. Then that's the fact. But God speaks the truth. God doesn't speak the fact only. Let's think more. Now, there is a father, and father, you know, he, he bought a car for his son and said, now you became 18, so I'm, you know, buying you this car. Please be careful, drive carefully, you know, fasten your seatbelt, and don't speed, and all, don't use your cell phone while you're driving, you know, things like that. You know, father taught Father told his son like that. And then the father bought a car for his son. Now this son, he didn't see belt. He he's you know, he's he was speeding and he was talking on the phone while he was driving. And then, then he got a car accident and his leg, you know, got cut off. And his father came. Did you talk on the phone while you're driving? You did, huh? Oh, you're speeding. Your your sister told me that you was you were really speeding, huh? No seatbelt? Hmm. Okay, well, it is natural of you. It's 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 very natural of you to get an accident accident. But that is the fact. But then there's no love in that. But remember, God is love. So he doesn't talk about all of these facts only. Even though his son got, you know, car accident because of his wrong behavior. You know, remember last night I told you, God gave us gives us the freedom of choice and because he gives us the freedom of even though he gives us the freedom of choice he's still responsible for our choice that is our god and now god it, i mean this father is responsible for this son's hospital fair Because this father loves his son, even though his, this, his son didn't listen to him, and then he got an accident, but then, you know, he will pay for the medical care, and then he said, I'll be responsible for my son's car accident. Why? Because I bought the car for my son. Because I gave him the freedom of choice. If I didn't, 
then you know he wouldn't have you know the car accident so this much god really wants to be responsible for our choice god loves us this much now you know bible says i punished you and then you got a cancer what does that mean even though you got you know this cancer because of your wrong behavior but i would say i punished you why because that way i can be responsible for you isn't this beautiful this is wonderful bible is this kind of book please don't read the bible with shamanist ideas this is our heavenly words. Do not understand, interpret these words with your earthly thinking. You know, our churches, by the way, don't teach this way. Well, my mission, my first mission, you know, is to show God truly in a right way. If you truly know God, you can't help receiving the spark. Oh, God is like this God. Our creator is this kind of God. You know, you can be happy if you understand this. This is so beautiful. This is so true. And this is so thankful. Remember the truth, the goodness, and the beauty. When you feel these things, your turned off genes have no reason to be turned on. have no reason to be have no reason not to be turned on you know bible you know because you don't listen to me and because you didn't obey me and i'm very upset i'm going to kill all of you and then you know we feel like oh scary god is so scary so we misunderstand god Now Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, this is about the the tree of life and the tree of uh, good and evil. Chapter 3, verse 9, I'm going to tell you about this later on. However, Eve, you know, picked that fruit of good and evil, even though God said, don't. After she ate, she did something that she was not supposed to do. When you do something you're not supposed, you're not told to do, You know, God said, you shall die, so do not eat this, but eat these kind of things. But then, you know, you did something you are not supposed to do. It means you denied God's teaching. Even though God said, if you eat this, you shall die. She ate. So when sh the moment she ate that fruit, she denied. She turned down life she refused God's life in a in her now when you are loved you are not afraid of any you're not afraid of anything but when you are not loved you feel like you're alone alone and you feel insecure so when you have no life when the life is blocked, you have fear. Now they are Adam and Eve, they're blocked from life, and all of a sudden they got scared. Well, let's imagine. Now there are if you know there is a lot of air around, 
that you are very relaxed. But if there is no air around, you are very you become very nervous. You become very insecure. When there is no life, you have fear, because you clo you are closer to death. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. When they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. You know, even your pet dog, you know, when they peed in the room, you know, your pet is not so happy, even though you you know, came home, you know, they, you know, try to avoid you. Uh, you sin, it means when we sin, sinning, okay, sinning means you deny the love of God. So, Adam and Eve, they hid themselves. Now, did God watch them already up in heaven yes god already saw them if i were god if i were god in that situation what would i do i already know where they you know hit themselves then i would just go i would go and I let's say they're hit th they hit themselves there then i would go back of them you you're you're hiding here don't you think i know this but god is not this god first god now what is the number one interest what is the number one interest what is the number one interest of god now let's say adam and eve were so afraid and they hid themselves that what does that mean? Now the relationship between man and woman, uh, the relationship between God and man, it's is very vulnerable. Now first interest of God is God's first interest is to restore the relationship, rebuild this happy relationship. That was God's first interest. Now you're going to read how God is going to restore the broken relationship. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? You know, our Almighty God knows everything. But then God says, Where are you? He already knew. But then he's saying, Where are you? What does what does this mean? Where are you? God already knew. Do you think he's lying? You ate what I told you not to eat? He doesn't pinpoint You know, when we pinpoint out somebody's fault, that we call, you know, condemn. But then God doesn't condemn us. God doesn't blame us. He gives us love first, and he gives us this choice for us to repent first. Because we have to confess our sins by the choice. If I say, hey, you're, you, you're here now. What did you do? You did something wrong. What did you do? Then, you know, we become very nervous. And we are very afraid. Now, that kind of repentance in the Bible... We don't call this kind of repentance. It's true repentance. Repentance. Now here, verse 9, God says, where are you? What does this mean? Yeah, God, you know, is very sorry for Adam and Eve because they're, 
they're fearful, they're shaken, they're shaken in fear. Now, where are you? God said. He had compassion in his heart. Now, you know, mm, I had two daughters. I told you already, one year apart. Now, five years later, I had youngest son. You know, when I had two daughters, I was very happy. I was very satisfied. But when I, when I had the third kid, and that was my son, I was very happy. Oh, I was, he was so adorable. You know, when he was young, he had allergy. Chocolate, cheese, he had chocolate, cheese allergy. So when he, you know, eats chocolates, you know, he got sick. You know, he threw up and, you know, he had diarrhea and things like that. Uh, one day, a kid came to my house and that kid brought some chocolates. You know, even though my son knows that he's going to have diarrhea, he's going to have indigestion if he eats chocolates, but, you know, my son kept eating. You know, this friend, by the way, he was a boy. He didn't give those chocolates to my, s you know, daughters, but then he gave those chocolates to my son. And then, you know, my sisters, I mean, my daughters went to my son and said, please give me some, you know, chocolates. But then, you know, my son didn't give him. And then later, my s daughters found out that my son had some chocolates. And then my sisters, I mean, my daughters, my daughters uh, were upset because, you know, uh, there's, brother didn't give him chocolate. So my daughters came up to me and said, you know what, dad, we didn't eat chocolate, but my, you know, brother, I mean, David, you know, had some. So what does that mean? So we didn't eat, so we are good. David, my brother ate, so he's bad. That kind of belief, shamanistic belief, of course, you know, that was all around, okay? Oh, so you didn't eat chocolate. Well, they couldn't eat actually because my son didn't give them chocolate. But they are very they felt they are very righteous. That this kind of attitude is not the right attitude. You know, if I praise my daughters, then, you know, those people don't know God. Now, by the way, because, you know, um, these two girls said, we're going to talk, you know, we're going to tell dad that you had some chocolate. So my son was very afraid. My son was very, you know, afraid because um, his sisters threatened him. So anyways, my son hid himself in the bathroom. Oh, my loving son, you know, he was afraid of his father because he had some chocolates. You know, you know, as I thought of that, oh, I wanted to comfort him. I want to free my little son because he was, he became the slave of fear. He became the slave of the sin. He misunderstood his father. Now, father is going to punish me because I had chocolates, even though my father told me not to. So my son was very afraid. And he was shaking, shivering in fear. I need to take him out of that misunderstanding. I need to take him. I needed to take him out of that fear. You know, some of you say, oh, I, I sinned a lot. I sometimes wanted my mother-in-law, you know, to die, things like that. But, but by the way, my neighbor there, sh she's worse than me. But, 
you know, she has no cancer, but I have cancer, you know, this is not fair. Oh, please. And then, you know, this person goes to church and, oh, please punish me. You know, that kind of ideas are all around. We are in that kind of shamanist belief. They're all confused. So I, you know, to save him, you know, I am not supposed to go to the bathroom, okay, right away, because my son will be even more afraid. So I was looking for my, you know, I said, where are you, David? Let's play baseball with dad. And my son was listening and, you know, you know, I wanted him to feel how much I love him. So when you read the Bible, you shouldn't read, then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? You shouldn't read the Bible this way. That is shamanist belief. But usually we read this Bible verse in that way. But to restore, to rebuild the relationship, I say, David, where are you? I miss you. And this little boy is having his own conflict. Should I just say, Dad, I'm here? You know, but I, you know, David, you know, was still hidden. I mean, David didn't show up. So I, you know, I was like, where are you? Where are you? And I went up to... You know, I went to the bathroom, and I could see, you know, the shadow in the bathroom. Oh, when I saw that, I felt so sorry for him. Because of the little chocolate, my boy is shivering. It, no matter how big, you s how big you sinned, God sees you with compassionate heart, with compassionate eyes just very little things. There's no, no greater sin that God cannot love. God cannot cover. You know, I was, you know, I kept saying, David, where are you? Where are you? And the door opened. Oh, what are you doing here, David? And my son said, oh, yeah, I sometimes play here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you little brat. You know, he didn't repent. He didn't want to say the truth. You know, I'm trying to give him more grace. But then, you know, God's love never changes. Let's play baseball with me. And then he came out and, you know, he held his stomach. And I said, what's wrong? You have stomach pain? And then he said, yes. And I was going to say, you had chocolate, right? But you are not supposed to say. You shouldn't say this sentence before my son speaks. You have to give more grace, more love, so that my son will speak by himself. So I said, oh, you're sick. Okay, you have stomach Stomach ache, so I'll give you this water. Okay, drink water. Maybe I will rub your stomach a little. Now, my son was so thankful. And I was holding his stomach. Then he would know that my father already knew the fact. But then my father doesn't punish me. My father doesn't blame me. So my son, you know, he was just thinking. So I was rubbing my son's stomach, belly. And you when you have a stomach, up, I mean, upset stomach, okay, you know, charcoal is good for you. So I said, uh, do you want some charcoal? So, you know, so I gave him chocolate, um, charcoal. And then after, I kept rubbing his stomach. And his pain, you know, disappeared. He was so thankful. My dad... 
loves me this much, oh, then I better say, I better speak the truth. You know, this we call true repentance. Now, my son said, Dad, I had chocolate. You know what I said? I knew that. And then my son said, you knew already? Dad, I love you. Thank you. That is rebuilding the relationship. When you have this kind of relationship, there's going to be no misunderstanding between father and son. And the son will grow freely. It means you know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's what it means. The truth will set you free. Now your changed genes will be recovered, will be restored in the love of God, in the wonderful love of God. Now let's sing God is so good, verse 1, and then verse 2, let's hum. loving Father in heaven. Father, we want to know the truth. We want to really understand your will. We want to really understand your love. Because you are the truth. You are the way. And you are the love. So we need to know you truly. Then we will know the truth and we will know the love. When we know the love, we will have our life back. Please, Father, open our hearts. Please, Father, help us to be free from these earthly thinking but then help us to have that heavenly way of thinking. Help us to be free from this small frame. Help us to help us to open our eyes so that we can be free. So that our turned off genes will be turned on. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Encourage each other. Have a good night. Have a wonderful rest.